What's up guys? So today we're gonna be going through some footage from our recent Switzerland trip at the Wave Garden there. And it was an amazing trip. Obviously we're still jonesing about it. Hope you guys have been enjoying all the episodes, but let's dive in a little deeper and uh, check out some clips. So I'm just gonna click play here and this is a really just inside look at what goes into us making the videos for you guys and then also you know how I break down footage, how I watch it, what I'm looking for and just a little more insight um, or a little more behind the scenes of what we do with all the clips. So here we go. Some water footage right here on a really nice sunny day. Um, I think this was the last day they were having the air section in so I'm kind of just trying to get as much as I can out of it but um, yeah you can tell I'm still trying to figure out the timing the water was like so clear in this that you could barely see the section so it took me a little while to figure out where I wanted to do the air but each one kind of gets a little better and I start doing a little more on each wave but yeah I'm just trying to do those air reverses right here stock standard indie grab air reverses boom just changed it up went for a little alley-oop there landed it looked like the wind was kind of going a little more offshore so it kind of was getting better and then yep i think this is when i put matt on land so we could really start going for these big ramps that was just a little stock standard nose pick air That was a little better air. I'm actually gonna rewind it and watch it back. I think that was one of the first good ones I did. Just replaying it here. I'm just looking at my setup, where my hands are, you know, where I'm eyeing up the section. This angle is really good too, because you can see where the section is coming and you can kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at. Checking my timing here. I got a good pop and release. Got the grab clean, let go. Got a little more rotation than I did on those other airs. Landed pretty clean, kind of on top of the wave in the white water. Almost got a little barrel coming out of it. But yeah, pretty sick one. Go to the next one. Watching through, here's another one. You can tell I'm just really eyeing up the, land, the timing. Pretty crazy to see cars in the background. That was a pretty sick one. I'm gonna rewind that as well. So this one, I'm kind of really making sure. I started noticing that if I got my foot in the right place early on in the wave, it would kind of give me a little more time to eye up the section and just to see, or make sure my board was in the right place and make sure it was under my feet and I could really manage my speed if my back foot was flush all the way at the tail. And I'm pumping, pumping, eyeing it up. And I usually do like two big pumps in the beginning and then I really load up so I can spring out of the, the section. But it's still kind of hard. It just varies on where I am on the wave or where I take off. So it kind of takes a while to figure out uh, the timing of when I should do those two pumps and then load up for the, the actual section. But here I loaded up pretty good. Got some good pop. I think the timing was a little better on this one. And I actually did a stale fish grab on this one, which is actually a grab that you, an indie grab is a regular like air reverse where you grab in front of you in your toe side rail. And a stale fish grab is actually when you go up and hit the section and you kind of flare your tail out enough so that you can actually lean back and grab the rail behind your heel side. So it's almost behind my right foot. So you can kind of see my hand kind of grabs right behind my right heel and then let go. That's called a stale fish grab. It's just a different grab. It kind of is harder to do because you're going against the momentum of your body. So you're doing an air that you're propelling forward, but then your body has to move back and then touch your heel side rail. So it's just a cool air to kind of play with when you have a lot of sections. but. When you see guys do this one in the ocean, it's pretty insane because it's really hard to get the timing and everything on the fly and be able to get that grab um, 
while you're in the air because it's just so hard and you have more momentum I think on a real wave because you're probably have been pumping down the line for a little bit more where this one is a really short section it kind of just like wedges up and like I said you do the two pumps load up and then do the air but this one I did pretty good didn't get as clean of a landing landing in the white water and then had to shuffle my feet back so when I'm picking airs that I'm gonna save for movies like the snap movie or if I'm gonna come out with an edit you know I'll kind of look for airs that I do really clean so I get a good clean entry in and my style's good with my hands in the right place and then when I get a good pop out of the lip and the, it's you can kind of see this spring um, out of the lip and then get a full rotation and then my landing is clean. I really focus on landing clean for good airs that I want to keep for movies or uh, surf edits or whatnot just because it just looks so much better and I feel like if you're falling back and you're like trying to recover doing an air it almost doesn't count because I mean pretty much fell and like came back up on your board but either way still figuring it out it's probably only my second day trying the air section that was another kind of rotationary reverse didn't get to rotate all the way and here's another one see me pumping that one I tried to go a little higher but the board kind of fluttered and went away from me but you see me setting up I'm getting my feet set start pumping and I actually think I started pumping a little too late I kind of took my time too much in the beginning and I was too deep on the section where since the section is so bowly here you kind of have to be out in front of it so if you can see me I'm pumping a little bit too late and my what is it my heel side rail catches because I'm pretty much like in the barrel and when I go up to do the air, I don't have as much speed and then I ended up hitting the section late, so. Still muscled my way through it, but kind of messed that one up. And then the next air, setting it up. This one I was way earlier and then that one I was way too early. So I pumped too far out and hit the section too early and I didn't get a good pop out of the section, so the board just came off my feet. There's another one. This one look, I look a little more lively, a little more ready. I'll try to go for a backflip. Didn't really work. I'm not getting the timing right. Oh, timing was a little better on this one. This is a good one. I'm trying to do a backflip right here. So I'm kind of setting it up, get my feet right. I made sure the first pump was really big and got way out in front of it. And Got a good bottom turn into the section. Looked like I kind of timed it really good. And then I went up. Kind of didn't get as high as I wanted to, but I'm still figuring out the section. So I'm kind of just trying to get some rotation out of the air and just try and land one to see how it feels. And I didn't get as high and get as inverted as I want to for the backflips. You kind of have to make sure you're squaring up to the section as if you're gonna go off the back of the wave. And then that will kind of counterbalance your timing to where when you're going up and you grab and then you flip it back, you're kind of whipping your head back into the flats, like towards land. And then when you grab your board, everything will follow. So it'll kind of actually put you more in front of the wave. So you want to aim more off the back of the section. So that'll give you time to land in front of the wave. So that'll push you back in. So it's kind of really hard to figure out the timing, but um, I was able to get the grab and time the section good enough for me to come around and I landed kind of at the top of the wave and spun back down. But that was the first backflip thing um, that I landed while we were at the pool. So that was, felt pretty good. And so I come in and we're actually working on the section while I was doing all these airs. And Josema, the wave garden guy, he's actually the guy who invented it and we we're kind of just figuring out uh, what the best air section would be but he really wanted me to try and do a backflip his goal was for me to do a backflip before I left so I was just we we're just trying to figure out the section and figure out my timing and I told him you know what I wanted out of the section so that I could be able to do it and I told him I want more lip so I could push harder off the section because the harder I can push off the section the higher I'll go and the more control I'll have over my board um, so yeah, we just kept trying and 
you know, I told him that one was good, but maybe, you know, tweak a little bit, but he was super stoked that I landed that one. So it kind of made me feel a little more comfortable. Got a little high five there, um, but we're going to go back out and try again. So here's my next wave going into it. Let's see if I get the timing good. That one was a little better, but I don't think I timed it. I was a little too early. I wasn't able to spring off the lip as good. Same thing, I was a little too early again. Just trying to figure out the timing. It's the best thing about these wave pools. I'm gonna get the same section every single time. So I can literally just practice in air until I land it because it's just up to me whether I get the timing right. And I'm not waiting for a wave to like give me the section. But that's kind of what makes it pretty appealing in the ocean that you have to do it one shot. And there's the second one I landed. So I'm dropping in. I'm really adjusting my feet, making sure everything's in the right place, making sure my arm placement's good. Start pumping, I do my two big pumps. I load up. And actually I noticed that the ones that I don't time that good, I cut my bottom turn short. So I can see in the footage here, I do my two pumps and I really am loaded up at the bottom of the wave to get a proper solid bottom turn. I think that's what really helped me um, hit the section better and get more pop out of the lip. Slow it down here. Timed it perfect. I'm way more inverted facing up out of the wave. Was able to get the grab with both hands and turn my head over my left shoulder and try and pull it back down into the wave and get the tail back in the water. And actually, if you slow-mo it, you can see my whole board is facing, the whole bottom of my board is facing the beach and I'm facing um, the wave. So I'm blind right here. There's water in my face. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm kind of just holding my board to my feet and just managing what I feel in the momentum of where my body is. And just trying to hope that I come all the way around and get, my, get all my weight on the tail of the board. So it's easier to land. So I'm way more inverted on this second air versus the first backflip that I landed. Um, I was just able to get more pop out of the lip and I timed it better and my bottom turn going into it was better. So I was able to get a little higher. My tail got up more out of the water and um, my rotation was better to where I was coming around and I was already facing the beach instead of the other one I was kind of like, it was almost like I did a double grab for rotation to where I just like did a, really fast spin and inverted. Where this one I kind of was more upside down where I went over my, like, hit the section and went over my left shoulder. Instead of just pointing it outwards, I went up and over to actually perform the backflip. But I still didn't get as high as I wanted to. So if you see when I come down, my nose pretty much digs into the water and I land straight into the lip. but since I was far out in front of it enough, it kind of just pushed me down to the bottom of the wave so I was able to ride out. But all in all, that was a pretty sick one. Either way, it's hard to land in all that just because you're, like I said, you're blind. You don't really know where you are. You don't know where the wave is really. You're kind of just trusting that the momentum is just gonna carry you back into the wave and then you just hold on, so. This is another move that if you see people doing it in the ocean, it's pretty baffling because so many things have to come together for you to actually pull this off. So it's actually like a really hard maneuver. I mean, you're pretty much doing skate maneuvers in the ocean, so. But that's why it's fun to go to the wave pool because it's kind of like a skate park. You get the same section, same ramp, same whatever you want to call it every single time. And you can sit there and just focus on that one maneuver and practice it until you land it. And that's the only way you're gonna get better, so. Um, it was pretty cool. That one I was really stoked on. Kind of got more rotation, a little more pop. Came in, Josemo was psyching, got another high five. It was, it was just super cool to work on something. And, you know, not only am I working on, you know, my surfing and the waves and stuff, but he's working on perfecting his wave and perfecting these air sections so guys can, you know, come and practice these things because it's hard to practice in the ocean. You don't get enough chances. So many elements have to come together that make it almost impossible 
to practice airs. I gotta go find, you know, a wave that has good air sections, but I could be surfing for three hours and maybe get one, if I'm lucky, two of these sections and I have to nail it. So to have the same section over and over and over again for freaking five hours is pretty insane. 12 hours. So <laughs> we were there for a long time and this was day after day after day of me being able to practice airs, but I can definitely feel a difference so that all this time that I'm putting in, practicing airs, getting the timing down, feeling the board under my feet, feeling my speed, managing the speed, and getting comfortable with being in the air and not really knowing what's going on, but almost having these cat-like reflexes to be able to just react to what's happening. So that's basically what I want to get to. And these wave pools really help you do that because you're gonna get so many chances, so much repetition. Um, that when those times do come together in the ocean, I'll be more confident in that I'll be able to perform in that specific time. Watching another one here. Now I'm kind of past the backflip, so I'm kind of working on different grabs. And since I got the timing down, and I can kind of work on different airs that I always try to do in the ocean and see, you know, how they go in the pool. That was a really sick air. I was really trying to work on the air reverses, whether it was a grab, indie grab or no grab. Um, I'm really just working on rotation. So when we're in contests and stuff, you know, stock standard air reverses or full rotation air reverses are really useful with getting scores or putting together combinations. You know, to do a snap into a full rotation air reverse is a really good thing to have. So for me, I'm really just trying to practice uh, my landing ratio and also the rotation to see how fast I can get the rotation and to get a full rotation more consistently and get used to that, that feeling of spinning all the way around and landing it clean. So I was really trying to focus on that. So here um, on this air, I'm really stoked on the rotation I got and landing clean. You can watch it back on the camera. Tail high, stuck it, throw it out clean. You know, riding out clean is important, especially for competition, because the cleaner I'm able to come out of a maneuver, the more chance I'll have in, you know, connecting it into another maneuver. So when you're thinking about, you know, getting scores, you want to be able to do the, your best maneuvers back to back to back as much as you can. So for me to land cleanly every time or more often is, you know, really crucial for me. Here's again another one. Trying different grabs again. I went for another stale fish. Didn't get as much rotation, but um, got the grab, so that's cool. Like I said, just practicing these different grabs, controlling my body in the air, getting more time in the air, getting the timing down better with the section. Sick little tail high, <clears throat> reverse. Kind of messed up the timing there. Looks like I bogged the rail going into the air section. Another one, really tried to get the rotation, but it looks like my footing was a little off, so the board came off. Those are scary, that's kind of how you get hurt. <laughs> that one was kind of a messy throw tail air reverse. Um, this one, I kind of was really trying to push the rotation, get my tail high up out of the water, but my front foot kind of came off, so it kind of caused me to uh, bobble it at the bottom of the wave. Coming into this section. That one was really clean and nice. I kind of, I got the grab on, like I did an indie grab on this one. And I got way more rotation, so I'm pretty stoked on that. Higher line, pump. One more big pump. You can kind of see my board just right at the top of like the coping of the lip. And then I drop deep down. I redirect my board to face the beach. Get a super deep bottom turn. Load up. And I kick the tail really hard. You can almost see like my feet come off my board a little bit. Get the grab, put the board back under my feet. 
spin and turn my head over my left shoulder as much as I can while keeping the board under my feet and making sure everything's solid. Pretty clean landing. And that would have been a pretty good score if I came out and did another turn or did a turn before that, so it's cool. Now we're kind of playing with the grabs. I'm trying to do these little straight, straight lean airs, they're called. A lean air is when you um, grab your, with your left hand, or I shouldn't say your left hand because for the goofy footers out there. A lean air is when you grab with your front hand behind your front foot. Behind, <sighs> I'm getting confused. A lean air is when you grab with your front hand behind your front foot heel, side rail. <laughs> and you just kind of hang it up there and you kind of manage your speed and your body in the air. Um, you can kind of see it when I'm doing it. I kind of pull the board and give it a little tweak. These are just really fun to do, um, just to practice controlling your body in the air and controlling the board at the same time. So you're able to go up with speed, grab the board, give it a little tweak, keep it under your feet and then land cleanly. So. I mean, it, it's not a crazy nuts air. I feel like it's pretty standard. A lot of people can do them, but it's just really fun to be able to play with your body and, and move in the air and, and do different things and just practice controlling. It's almost like, <clears throat> well, I got so many air sections. It's almost like I'm playing on a trampoline at this point. I'm just practicing being in the air with my surfboard, so. I do this a few times. I was just kind of playing with it. It's almost like a, it's kind of skate-ish to where skaters kind of launch off the coping and do their little like tweak ears. It's super cool. <clears throat> Sky is standing on the air section thing. <laughs> we can slow-mo this. This looks crazy. I'm pretty sure if you did this in the ocean, you might die. So definitely don't do this if you see this in the ocean. But. So he's standing on the block that's creating this air section. You can see I'm kind of loading up, eyeing out the section, and he's literally standing where I'm gonna do the air. So I'm trying to manage my speed so I don't hit him, and I'm able to grab my board so that I can do like this little transition air right over him, so. Pretty cool. It's fun air to be playing around with. Run again. That one I went for a slob air, so I grabbed with the same hand as the lean, but I grabbed on my toe side rail and did the same kind of little tweak. Like I said, I'm just playing with it, trying to see um, what different airs I like, how I feel in the, um, in the air with my board, working on little technique stuff, setting up the timing. Went for another slob. You can kind of tell maybe this isn't the right section for that type of air. I'm not getting as much pop out of the lip but it's cool to try. Now I just went for a stock straight indie grab air. Here's another one, another indie grab. These ones I'm really trying to tweak and play with in the air. You can tell like some of them, my body is like way over the board and some of them my body's like under the board. So it's just playing with being more inverted or more over my board, seeing how I like it. You know, like I said, I'm practicing not only to do, you know, one maneuver airs on waves, I'm trying to practice like doing combinations. So I'm trying to see what airs would be good to do in between turns and linking, kind of like linking in between airs. And this one I can kind of, I'm really practicing the setup as well. So I'm like playing uh, where I want to have my weight shifted before I do the pumps, where my arms are. Cause where my arms are before I start the air are going to determine where my arms go while I'm in the air. So I really want to keep everything tight and compact. So then when I go up and explode and I expand my body, my arms aren't just flailing everywhere. They're kind of like tight and keeps my core engaged, keeps everything tight so that when I'm in the air, it's easier to control my body and, you know, be able to control what I'm doing in the air to make the landing 
not as gnarly. So, you know, doing airs is all about the landing. So you have to be in control so that when you land, you're not landing, you know, like out of range or like overly extended because that's kind of how you get hurt. You don't want to be like overly extended and, you know, have your knees buckling and doing weird stuff. So you want to be tight, compact, core engaged. Keep going, you can kind of tell I'm ramping up. Looks like the wind's getting better in these clips. There I went for my alley-oop, for rotation alley-oop on this section. We're gonna go back to this. See if I set it up different, you know, different airs, you have to set up different with the timing and whatnot. So, and kind of look, I'm stalling more in the beginning instead of like doing a pump. So I stall and get high on the wave. Wait for that timing. Get high on the wave. Do one more little pump. Load up. Wow, this one I really keep everything compact. My elbows are in. I get low to my board. I'm able to eye up the section. But now you can see when I'm going up to hit the section, my body or my shoulders are literally parallel with the lip. So I'm squared up totally with the wave and I'm getting ready for that, you know, back shoulder to drop and my front shoulder to come over and my head to turn over my right shoulder. So basically when, I, when I'm squared up, I'm gonna go up and hit the lip and bring my front foot up so that the rest of my body follows and I'll bring my, you know, open up my hip and then the nose of the board will go straight up. And then simultaneously, once I hit the lip, I'm dropping my right shoulder and turning my head as much as I can. The more head movement I get into this maneuver, the faster my body will spin. But at the same time, I'm trying to hook my foot, my back foot into the tail of the board to keep the board flush to my feet. So there's a lot going on in this specific time. So it's really, it takes a lot of repetition and a lot of chances at uh, this section. But for me, once I got the timing down and once I got, you know, my movement of my body, you know, spinning in that motion, um, it was kind of easier for me to land more and, and control my body in the air. So I think the biggest thing for this is, you know, getting your feet set on the board, hitting the lip as much as you can, squaring up your body, and then being able to rotate your shoulders and your head so that the rest of your body follows in time um, to get a clean landing. What I like about this air the most is the, uh, the landing. I was able to do a tail tap landing, which is you know the best type of landing you can do for an air. If you can do an air and land in a way that your tail drops and taps the top of the wave and then you ride out, that's the most ideal way to land an air and the cleanest way. So I was able to kind of do it on this one, so I'm stoked. Here we go again. Am I gonna do a backflip? Try it again and we land it, but it wasn't as big as the ones I fell on, so that will bum you out. But let's watch this one again. Went high. It looks like I kind of took a lot of what I was doing with the other airs and the timing of the airs. So like I'm doing that stall and I'm getting higher on the wave in the beginning and then really dropping down low to hit the section and square up. Looks like doing all those other airs kind of helped me with the timing of the backflip, which is interesting. But you can tell I have way more intention of getting to the section where before I was kind of waiting for it, where now I would stall in the beginning and then really race and try and get there as fast as I can, which would kind of makes more sense because you're meeting power with power. So you're getting a powerful section and then you're meeting me with more speed pushing off of it. So it kind of just, everything flows better. Stall, stall, get high, get down, and then boom, boom, three pumps into it. Land clean, super stoked. That was it. Here's just a few that I can pick, that I look at and I pick certain things from. Um, you know, I like to look at my timing and you know where I'm positioning my body and, and where my feet are on the board and what's happening in the air. So, you know, watching this many airs and being able to break down the footage is really useful for me. Um, just to get better. I mean, I want to be able to land 
air is on call. Like I said, in the ocean, things, you don't get this many chances at doing airs in this many sections. So you gotta be able to do things on call when it all happens. Everything has to come together and you have to be ready. Your body has to be ready. And you know, your timing and your ability has to be on point. So this definitely helps. Super stoked I'm able to go to these wave pools, work on things, come back home, watch the footage and be able to practice it in the ocean. Um, as well as, you know, I'm filming for a movie all at the same time. So I'll watch all these airs. I'll figure out which ones are the best ones where I'm doing all, I'm going through my checklist of, you know, did I get high enough? Was it clean? Did I get the grab that I wanted? Did I come out clean? Did I come out into another turn? All those things um, kind of factor in when I'm picking airs to save for movie parts or whatnot. So um, glad I was able to break this down. Super stoked to watch these clips again. I mean, I feel like I can just keep watching it and keep learning. So um, I think this is really huge for me, but glad I was able to sit down, break some footage down with you guys, kind of give you a little more behind the scenes of what goes into when I'm surfing and you know what I look for to get better. So um, yeah, super fun trip to Switzerland. Still stoked on it, still breaking down footage, watching the footage, trying to figure out where we're gonna go next. So definitely stay tuned. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support through all the other videos as well. We're gonna keep doing this for you guys. So, you know, make sure you like this video, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Allah.